Hey, Good News family. This is Tana Heineman, the host of our Now What podcast. This is where we unpack Sunday's message and we talk about how to practically apply it to our everyday lives. I love that you're here with us, and I love that we get the opportunity to spend more time with our pastors and have them teach us even more what the Word has to say about our everyday lives. We learn from Jesus that one of the best ways to grow is in community together. So join us as we unpack Sunday's message. Hey, Good News family. I'm so happy to be back. It's been a couple weeks. I've been to Central America and you know, seen my daughter and grandchildren. It's been a busy couple weeks. I want to give a shout out to Sarah and say thank you for you know holding down the fort on the podcast and um, corralling the squirrels. <laughs> Um, because I know, I, I literally, I think she had it's Josh, Josh it's the biggest squirrel you'll ever. Meet. Absolutely. Then Pesh sure. Raphael and you, like that's a lot of squirrel activity right there. Lot. And she managed, she managed it well. But it's probably because she's the mother of six children. It's true. So she can handle it, she right? Can. She's the perfect one to hold down the fort for me. But thank you so very much for doing that, Sarah. And thanks everybody for being here today. We're in the Sermon on the Mount, week four. And, um, but let me first jump back. How was Father's Day? It was good. Yeah, what'd yeah. you do? Uh, hung out with kids. Um, we grilled out. They came over late and we just made burgers and sat and talked, which is, you know, normally we watch something or laugh, but we yeah. probably sat for several hours and just kind of hung out. And Love it. that is not as common mm -hmm. as what used to be, mm -hmm. but uh, it was good. I love those times. I really yeah. do. Uh, Nate and I, we have this app called Questions in a Box, and it has like four different levels of boxes. If my kids are listening, they are legitimately rolling their eyes right now. Okay. Yeah. But first of all, they never listen. Anyways. Y'all have done this for a couple of years now. Yeah. It's been a long thing like we've talked about. And uh, we just had our anniversary this last weekend. And so I pulled that app out because we were finally sitting at dinner with nobody to interrupt us. And I could just throw all these questions. But what I was saying it is, it's also something we love to do with the kids. Right. I'll have them trapped in a place where... <laughs> They have to answer these stupid questions, but it will rabbit trail into really good conversation. Sure. And, you know, nobody's supposed to be playing Brawl Stars on their phone in those moments, though some of them do. They shall remain nameless. But I do love those moments of conversation. I tell parents of young kids, too, that they need to cherish the times when they're driving their kids everywhere. Yeah. Because in a blink, they drive themselves. And you don't really realize how that 20 minute drive, especially when you're sitting side by side, looking out the window, you can have deeper conversations than That's if we're right. like That's looking right. across especially the table. Especially the sex conversations or the- Absolutely. Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, those kind of big decisions. Yeah. Who are we gonna be? Um, how are we gonna stand up for Jesus in right. a fallen world? You need to be looking out the windshield yeah. and you can have a lot of great conversations. So there's our parenting advice 101 for sure. today. Uh, really celebrate the times you have in the car because then they're gone. You know, Chris and I, um, we have really missed Italy. Mm. Miss make believe world. Yeah. And and we miss Sorrento. So we just kind of sit and sigh. <laughs> but we loved it. It was so awesome. So, you know, I think the dream um, every every two or three years. You now the kid, when the kids move out and they're on their own, you have more disposable income. Mm -hmm. So we just. You know, we're going to plan every yeah. number of years. Be intentional. May go back just yeah. to Sorrento. Yeah. Uh, we just loved it. That's so great. Uh, Sorrento, <laughs> Alabama. That's the, um, I also picture the cheese, Sorrento. Is that where it comes from? There's a brand of cheese. Sargento. Oh, that's Sargento. Mm -hmm. Sorrento, Sargento, whatever. Tomato, yeah. tomato. Okay. Let's get started. These people are not here to hear me talking about Sargento cheese. Okay. I am loving, I'm really kind of bummed that I've missed two weeks of Sermon on the Mount, although I've gone back and listened to them, but I like to be there live. It's way better. But um, I love this portion of scripture because for people who are not maybe super used to being in the Bible, it will ruffle your feathers a little well, bit. Uh, rough as mine. Yeah. And just even processing through, did he say what? And and how in the world am I supposed to be able to do that? That's and right. why is he saying this? Um, What's the motive behind it? Whatever it, um, you can't just read it once and run through it. Even like how we started the series, he's rewriting the word blessed and like how we as right. humans want to define the word. And he's actually explaining, no, 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 no. This is what it means. I'm with you there, even in the midst of, yep. and that's blessed. That's the good life as you put it. Uh, and now we're going to start to transition into some real practical 
how we live this out. Right. So he starts in this portion. We were in Matthew 5, 17 through 30 this week. And so he starts out by talking about the law and that he's here to fulfill all that the law was written for, all that the prophets have talked about. And uh, he's going to take it a little step further. Yeah. Right. And I think so. Jesus is trying to um, talk to people who have, who have they grew up and they knew the law and they knew it better than we know the Bible. It, it was just the culture they were part of. Um, but also he's trying to give insight into the ethics behind it, human behavior, the effect on culture. Um, he's also, you know, they, they are being suffocated mm -hmm. by the Pharisees and all the other laws included. And, um, but within it, he's trying to redefine, this is what God actually meant. This was his intent mm -hmm. and what will happen, not only for you, but how this brings rightness to the culture and the community around. So he, he's doing all of these things by saying, I'm not going to get away from it or have it, I'm going to show you what God actually meant when he instituted it. Yeah, I, I heard it that way uh, even this week when you were talking of like, it's not that God uh, had fresh revelation. Right. Um, it's not that he changed his mind on his intent. It's that we as humanity are looking at it way down here. And he's like, no, 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 no. This is where my kingdom is. This is what it means to X, Y, or Z, these commandments. And I was at a, um, I was at a conference the last couple months and I haven't read the book yet, but um, it, one of the scholars that was teaching at the conference was talking about it. I can't remember if I've mentioned this on the podcast before, but uh, opened my eyes to consider that the Pharisees weren't as bad as we've made them out to be. Have I told you this yet? No. And where even when we talked about on Sunday where the Pharisees have added over 600 fence laws, fence laws right. to the law in hopes that it will help people obey the law better so the Messiah will get there. It's possible that their intention was actually good. good. Yeah. It wasn't just That's to right. yep. make it a mess, lord over everybody, whatever. It was just like, I don't trust that you're able to right. make the right decision, That's so right. I'm going to put all these laws because I really want the Messiah to get here. Yeah, it's like today when there is a picture on the toaster and it's, a, it, it's got a picture with a hand going into the toaster with a, with with a, a circle, line yeah. Okay. That is kind of what they're trying to do. Uh -huh. But it became so, you know, women can't pluck their hair on a, yeah. on a Sabbath, mm -hmm. and it just became ridiculous. Over. Yeah. So I think they're, they wanted to do the right thing. They just begin to think about all these crazy ways to try to control behavior. Yeah. Which, uh, I believe we still do the same thing. Of course. Uh, in lots of ways, and um, and have to constantly be recognizing. Uh, wait a minute. Am I it, even in parenting? Wait, am I making this rule because I, I'm, right. or am I trying to teach them how to follow God, hear the Holy Spirit, and make a decision? Or am I just going to try to fence, right. literally fence them all in uh, so that they don't accidentally make a wrong decision or something? Uh, I, mean, I think sometimes it's easier if we can control behavior. But I think what Jesus is trying to get to listen, we want you, He wants you to obey, but He wants you to to have the right motivating reason yeah. why you're obeying. Yeah. 100%. Um, and then even still, too, he's, he's, the people are God followers, the religious and, mm -hmm. and those who are following, who are like interested in following Jesus. They're God followers, but they're just trying to figure out how do we follow this law in a world and a culture that doesn't totally. follow him. Yeah. And I believe that reality, again, is still the same today. today. So the principles that Jesus is responding to them with, they're the same. Yesterday, today, forever, they haven't changed. Right. People have been wrestling them out since the beginning of time. We're wrestling them out. What does it look like to follow the principles of the law that Jesus has given us in a world that doesn't want to follow it? Yes. Right? That's not easy. It's not easy. <laughs> it's really not. And I, you know, I think sometimes it's pretty offensive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. um, it challenges what we have grown accustomed to, even maybe within our family. Yeah. There, there's behaviors and things we can do in our family that we go, uh, okay, mm -hmm. you know, you can let that slide. And God's really challenging. He's, Jesus is really getting lower mm -hmm. than cultural expectations and even some religious expectations to go we're really going to go to the depth of your heart i want to i want you to understand why these were instituted again i don't know why i'm swinging back to parenting all day today but again it's like 
we can get our kids to do a lot of things or we can address a heart posture and intention behind it that then develops them into men and women of character, men and women who are a true light for Jesus. They're not just doing things, and then as soon as they get out from under that, you know, they're... Yeah. Yeah, we all know. Okay. Um, So thinking through this uh, and trying to live in a culture that doesn't want to have anything to do with the real the true principles of what Jesus is saying the law truly means. And we live in the same thing. Uh, I found myself like kind of chewing through questions when I'm listening. So what are some examples of maybe secular thought that was dominating their culture then? And then relate that to what are some examples of our current culture? Well, I mean, you know, you you have, at least in their time, you have um, the hope and the promise of a Messiah. You have the hope of um, that one day they will be Israel on their own again. Mm-hmm. And, and it, promise was connected to land. Mm-hmm. You know, just like eternity, we're going to be at a place and it's going to be perfect and peaceful and, and uh, the Messiah will be there. So I think you have a lot of these hopes, these desires, these dreams, um, uh, even biblical promises connected to it. But they're living in a reality that this is 180 degrees opposite, mm-hmm. and and maybe they're they're exhausted by taxation. Um, at any point in time, a soldier could say, "Hey, you're going to carry this, you know, and walk one mile for me." And mm-hmm. if you do wrong, you know, your house could be raided. What, whatever. And so they're living in fear, uh, bondage, um, and also that watching maybe hope fade. Yeah. And so they have all of these hopeful expectations in the Messiah, but they're also going my reality. Mm-hmm. It feels like the, the thing that I held close is, is slipping away. And I think we can kind of look at America in the same way, Western world, our world, whatever you want to say, the, the ideas of, man, I, I thought it would be different. Uh, I thought Christianity, you know, the, the idea of revival, revival is going to change the world. And it, and it is in a lot of places, but it's not exactly what we thought or mm-hmm. you know I, I thought if if um, I gave my heart to Jesus then every problem would go away mm-hmm. and it, it's more that God is trying to institute this new way of living thinking uh, that leads you to the blessed life which is connection yeah. with Jesus and and there is blessing associated mm-hmm. but um, you know I think a lot of people struggle and you know they they pick things just like the four sex did Mm-hmm. In, in that time and, and you know we want to overthrow the government and put in a, a religious mm-hmm. uh, government or what have you mm-hmm. and um, I don't think it's much different from a philosophy standpoint uh, even if the the way they're living is different or yeah. the condition they're living is yeah. different mm-hmm. uh, how does one stand firm in the truth that they know when they're living in a situation and maybe I need to back that up how do you even know what the truth is And I think that is the culture we live in. Mm -hmm. You know, whatever you believe is true is your truth and live your truth. Um, But you got to start with, at least from our perspective, from a a spiritual standpoint, you start with what Jesus talks about, what the Bible talks about. And Mm -hmm. listen, the the Bible is both challenging, it's comforting, but it's challenging. It is um, in your face. Mm -hmm. It's going to challenge your, your, you know, scripture says, even to the, the, um, between bone and marrow, it gets into those mm-hmm. deep places w- within us. So mm-hmm. um, it's not easy. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times when things get into those uncomfortable places, our natural response is, nope, I, I don't want to feel that. Or justify it. Or justify. Or justify what we're doing or why we're doing it or the motivation for it. Mm-hmm. Or um, and, and that's why you know spending time with Scripture is so important because it, it really begins to seep in Mm -hmm. and allows Mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit to speak to that moment. I was listening to a podcast just this morning and they were talking about if the Bible is not making you uncomfortable sometimes, then you might not be reading it enough. And talking about how the premise I have to choose because of faith coming into that I'm going to believe that God is good and he is love. So if there's something I'm reading that makes me contrary to that, of like, God, why would you say that? Why would you do that? Then I can't stay in that spot. I need to keep digging and keep coming back to it and keep saying, God, my foundation is you are good. So help me understand your goodness through this portion that's really hard for me to wrap my head around. And I really loved that, of the premise I have to come to the Bible with. And that is 
where faith is involved in truth and believing that the Bible is the ultimate absolute truth. There takes an element of faith. You can science it away, you can history, you can do all those things are added benefits that we can have, but bottom line, I have to ultimately choose to believe that his word is truth and, the, and he is good in that truth. So therefore I'm going to keep digging even through the spots that are uncomfortable. Yeah, I, I'm finding it ironic. So, you know, Spurgeon, I think, said, if um, if your people aren't mad at the Bible mm. and God, then maybe you're not preaching. Right. <laughs> and so I, I found myself really processing with the Lord some of these things. Mm. Um, you know, we're going to talk about anger and lust, mm -hmm. two things that all of us experience in different ways. Lust yeah. being... It was sexual in connotation, but there's there's our desire for, for sure. so many things. Yep. Pursuit of something, hopefully to, to fill a void, um, is, is the root of lust, something mm -hmm. that can never be fulfilled. But mm -hmm. um, I find myself really sitting with the Lord, especially when it comes to the challenge of what he's saying, because mm -hmm. he's, he's we justify so many of our actions, behaviors, thoughts, patterns, mm -hmm. but he's going, this is why I love the Bible, because it doesn't matter who you are, how much money you have, what background you come from, if you're rich or poor, he's going, don't be angry. Mm -hmm. That's everybody. Mm -hmm. And so the, you know, we can't go with that group or mm -hmm. their circumstance or that situation or that country mm -hmm. or they're not believers. He's going, do you hold contempt against them? Mm -hmm. You need to deal with that. Yep. And I think it's beautiful. Yep. I mean, it really is. It's truly impactful. Mm -hmm. So I find myself sitting with the Lord going, how, how do we do this? Mm -hmm. How do I allow you? Right? What do I do with my anger? What do I do with lust? What do I do with these things that come up? They, they're in, in me, mm -hmm. in my heart, and they come up. What do I do mm -hmm. in that moment? And yep. so I'm, I'm being challenged just as much as anybody else, and I love it, Yeah. but uh, I don't always like it. No. Well, he starts with anger, and I'm pretty sure both of us can attest to that we've both been angry mm -hmm. a couple times. Uh, just, just in this moment. Just, hey, <laughs> better not be at me. It's I didn't not. do anything. Um, yeah. yeah, anger is a tricky one. I, I grew up in an angry home. I'm the product of an angry home, sure. but I can't make the excuse That's right. and continue the legacy of an angry home. Yeah. And I feel like um, even, even my family made strides from what they came from. And like I've said before on this podcast, they're first generation believers. So even what they've come from and how as we continue down the line, I'm my faith. My hope is that there will be less and less of that presentation of anger right. uh, because we're getting more and more free yeah. from what that was. But at the same time, we're still human and there's still going to it just it's might present itself. Sure. Nate and I used to discuss often that his anger comes out different than mine. Yeah. And it doesn't make his better than mine. Right. Mine's a little louder, sure. a little bigger, and uh, his is a little more subtle. But we had to recognize that our delivery might be different, but it's the same root right. is still happening here and address that and not make excuses for it. And there's a couple of things, you know, as Jesus is presenting anger, he's presenting it in this step down examples. Yeah. So they're familiar with what, he's using so he he says um when you are angry or rage mm -hmm. there's going to be a consequence for that yeah and then when you say raka a worthless there's a mm -hmm. consequence for that and then when you say uh idiot mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. you, and you oh my gosh mm -hmm. everybody at some point in time uh, you know yeah. even if it's under your breath yeah you idiot. Idiot. yeah yeah he goes you're dang you're in danger of hellfire mm -hmm. and it's like what mm -hmm. rage and you know saying you don't have worth mm -hmm. and then to idiot mm -hmm. and it he, feels backwards it does not gonna lie it does <laughs> i use idiot a lot more than i do yeah. rage <laughs> and, and and so what he's doing is he, he's trying to you know get to this this place of instead of strong reaction being the worst he's trying to get actually to the seed mm -hmm. of it mm -hmm. and and reminding us this is where this leads mm -hmm. and it wasn't hair file uh sorry um the the fire of hell mm -hmm. it actually was a valley and and there was um when israel was destroyed by a foreign king there were bodies littered everywhere because they wouldn't change and he's just going if you don't change that idea mm -hmm. that you have in your heart for somebody else it can lead to destruction mm -hmm. 
And I mean, you know, some of the, the, my biggest regrets is I was not healthy in early years in marriage or early years with my kids. Mm -hmm. And those are those primary, and now I see it. Mm -hmm. I see some of their actions or reactions and I go, oh yeah, mm -hmm. that's me. Yep. That's not a, that's not, not a great look. No, it's not. Yeah. It's hard to, to watch those things happen. Even just, uh, I think you use the word, is it in the scripture contempt? Or it's yeah. the definite, it's, it's in there, right? Yeah. Contempt. It, yeah. And I looked up the definition of it and it just even talks about despising or a sheer loathing. Uh, and it was like a severe, like disappointment or something like that. Like those kind of words of contempt towards someone and how, how I can think of the ways I've felt that way towards people or something. And so when he, when his example is backwards and he gets down to that idiot fool, um, even the Raka that there's that contempt for a person and how, um, that becomes a very personal And that's, that's anger. one of the four oh, yeah. horsemen in the destruction of a marriage. Yeah. Because contempt is this low level seething type yeah. of dislike. Yeah. Um, and here's the thing. So you may have that for a family member. Mm -hmm. You may hold that against a parent. Mm -hmm. You may have that against a political group. You may hold that against a race or a nationality. And, and we go, well, this is just, this is just the way that it is. And Jesus is putting his finger on it mm -hmm. and you've got to deal with that. Yeah. It, I, I hear the word devaluing too, because I've used that in my marriage and I just devalued Nate, his role, the words he might say, his efforts, whatever, because I let my anger get out of control. Um, and then even like you said, with the kids, my oldest, she had a completely different set of parents than the, than the other ones have had and far from perfect still, but I'm like, boys, you don't even have any idea the Tana that raised your, your sister. Yeah, so you right. really need to yeah. be thanking Jesus. Yeah. And because, and I hate that. That's yeah. just the reality of life, of my journey and my process. Yeah. I don't like it. Uh, I can repent of it and pray that the kids take away value from it and not pain. And like we've talked about before, we'll pay their therapy um, and help them. <laughs> and so, I, you know, and, and I'll, in my mind, I always, it, it's one of the biggest regrets of my life. Mm -hmm. And, um, that you don't want to give away something that is less than or bad or whatever, and you give that away. Mm -hmm. That's part of life. Mm -hmm. God calls us and saves us out of stuff. Mm -hmm. And it takes time for that to be worked out of you. Um, I, I, I think the other thing that um, is it, we have to remember is that we're always in process, that mm -hmm. God is always wanting to do this work. And mm -hmm. I hated initially my approach to anger or lust or any of these things, it always seemed like a series of hoops that I was trying to jump through. Well, you just gotta do this and then it'll go away. Nope, then you gotta do this mm -hmm. and it'll go away. And then, oh, God must, must be mad at me or disappointed. So I gotta figure out how to do it on my mm -hmm. own. Or, mm -hmm. you know, it was this constant cycle, not understanding that God loved me no, no less, right? In that moment of anger or lust. And he wanted to meet me no less in that anger or lust. And he wanted to walk me through no less in that anger and lust. And it, it's the process of understanding in that moment, I need him, mm -hmm. my confession, God, meet me, help me, forgive me. Um, that is the, the, the part that sets us free. Mm -hmm. And so I, I just don't want people hearing this, the Sermon on the Mount, and it becomes this unending impossibility because we're going to always mess up. It really is this place where God says, if I can get to that place in your heart mm -hmm. and I can begin showing you how I meet you or lead you or guide you, and then show you ways that you can begin to conquer that mm -hmm. or deal with that, or um, maybe connect you with other people who can show you how they did the same thing. Mm -hmm. And you begin to rely on me, you can be set free, you can mm -hmm. change. Mm -hmm. You're still gonna react at times. Mm -hmm. It just won't be as often, yep. and it won't be as white hot, yep. and it won't be as destructive, and you'll be able to go, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. and, and good can come from what you're learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one of my big takeaways, I don't use it as ho at home as much as I should, but uh, PR taught it to me. If I have something I want to say, and he puts his hand like right here in front of his mouth, and like, yep, that that's me trying to like, let's just not let this pass through this gate, you know, right. while you process through, this might be how I feel, but this isn't right, 
and this isn't what God wants of me. And we learn different practices, which we're going to get to today, of how to change those things things so that we don't, we may have a, a, a hint of regret from maybe how we raised the kids or whatever that we didn't figure things out sooner. But like you said, God's grace is sufficient for all of that. We are on a journey. And another one of my favorite things that you and I both learned in EHS was that we all have limits. Yeah. And it really stinks to have to face the reality sure that we does. have limits. And our kids don't always recognize that we have limits until they get older yeah, and right. they start to recognize, oh. I have limits and uh, now recognize yours and you did pretty good for your limits. Yep, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Those are like wonderful moments, but. Um, I, you know, I, I used the illustration or tried to, I don't know if I communicated it well, but Jesus is trying to get us to think about um, our, this anger origin mm -hmm. in dealing with it before we deal with the destruction so he's trying to help us think way downstream by thinking upstream. And, you know, an arsonist, you know, if, if, if you had a, an arsonist burn down a house and, you know, the team shows up and they begin looking, you know, was this natural or was this a man-made thing? And, and they look for the accelerant and then they go, okay, this is where it started and this is how it started and this was what the result of it. Jesus is trying to get us to think like that. Mm -hmm. Think ahead of time about what you're doing, what you're allowing and permitting and then think about where that's going to lead. Mm -hmm. it, idiot mm -hmm. to a valley filled with dead Death. people mm -hmm. because you would not turn to me. Mm -hmm. And it may not be that in our life, but there may be broken relationships. Right, that's what the all, death all, is. Yeah, mm -hmm. all of those kind of things. And mm -hmm. I, it really struck me mm -hmm. to begin going, Lord, please mm -hmm. don't allow this to remain in me or if I'm hurt, what do I do with that? Or if somebody talks about me, what do I do with that? Or I've learned these things, what do I do about that? I will say this is off the cuff. So let me know if I'm off base here, but when I'm thinking back to the trigger things of anger, they're, they're, they come from an unhealthy spot in me, sure. right? Like when you're talking about those, um, the things that start the fire, what's the word you said? the right, accelerants or whatever, like, like, you know, somebody says something to you, I hear it like this, or it takes me back to when someone said it to me in a very mean way or something. And so then I respond out of anger or out of not knowing my value and worth sure. or those kind of things that we can or look you're back. Defensive yeah, or, yeah. See what the triggers are, what those accelerants are, sure. where did this come from? I'm glad you explained that because yeah, I didn't follow on Sunday and I was like, wait, I think this sounds like a really great example, but I couldn't follow it. So thank you. It was one of those weeks. Yeah. It really was. <laughs> I, I walked out going, oh, I would have done this and this and this. And I'll, I'll say this. I did not include it. I had it in my notes hmm. um, that when, when you're hurt or you're abused or something has happened and God's going, I don't, I don't want you to hold on to that anger. He does not dismiss That's right. the things that have happened. Right. He's going, I don't want you to be in prison. Mm -hmm. I don't want you to be locked up in that. Mm -hmm. And so I want to be able to meet you in that, show you how to deal with it. Because mm -hmm. I, I think there's a lot of people out there, you have experienced something horrific, mm -hmm. racism, mm -hmm. abuse, mm -hmm. demeaning, maybe a parent mm -hmm. was mentally ill or mm -hmm. what have you and just treated you mm -hmm. very poorly. And you still bear open wounds mm -hmm. or maybe scars. Mm -hmm. And so it's not like, oh, just get over it he's going, I want to meet you in mm -hmm. it. And, and that's the goal. Totally. Yep. I get it. Uh, okay. So then he moves on. Well, really even in anger, I found myself thinking about, uh, when, when I was looking at the definitions of contempt and Raka and all of that of despising, you can't love someone whom you despise. Right. And so if Jesus you can't reach somebody who you despise, right. I mean, if we're Christians. Yeah. And so if, if God, if Jesus is saying, you know, I mean, he hasn't said it, in, in Matthew at this point yet, but when he's talking later and he tells us, you know, the two greatest commandments are love the Lord your God and love others. I can't love others if I despise them. Right. And then it affects my ability even to love God because I'm, I can't love him honestly and purely if I right. despise everything he's created. Right. So there's this. We're, let's put a pin in this because we're going to yeah. come back to this when we do our practice. Oh, okay. okay. All love right. God, love people. Okay. So loving God, love people, because that is one of my questions. So then it does transition though into lust because I, I'm not loving others the way that God loves them. If I am lusting over them 
or over their things if we're sure. going to make it yep. broader yep. i mean even that you said that was commandment number seven is do not commit adultery and commandment number 10 is the do not covet so they're they're kind of intertwined and politics it's like, will use that what? I, I, you, you see it all the time somebody has something that you don't have oh which drives a wedge yes and then creates i mean jesus was turned over Pilate said because of envy mm. and so you yes. see these things uh, a form of manipulation mm -hmm. and um I, I just can't stand it i don't like when things are wielded mm -hmm. like that against people yep. i think that's as as much abuse as um some other things yeah Okay, so then, so for transitioning this lust, it can be of the flesh, it can be of wanting another human being sexually, but it can also mean so many things anything, in lust. Anything that is outside of you, you think if I can get that, it'll satisfy and it never can. I meant to look up the scripture, I'm putting you on the spot, I don't know if I can say even enough of it, but we, um, it's like the three things, it's like lust, the pride of life, lust of the, the eyes, lust of lust the eyes, of the flesh, lust of the flesh, and the pride of life, whatever. So it's more he he in this context potentially when he's talking to the crowd and the, and he's speaking directly to the men. Well, yeah, because he's using the example of yeah. looking upon another woman. And so then we women read the scripture and we're like, oh, good, we don't have to pay attention. Sure. No, 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 because I do believe that women still lust after men, and it may it just might be sure. different. Might be um, a man who is accomplished or has a name for himself or who has money or who might be able to provide for me or something like that or he look how he treats his wife right. versus the way he treats me you don't me. know what's happening behind the scenes absolutely and we do all these things and we try to give ourselves permission well we're just seeing what else you know I wish I had that well then again it leads right back to that devaluing what right. you do have uh, and again, this false idea of what you think they have, really. So lust is not just a man thing towards women. It can be a women thing towards men sure. as well. Now, in context, in this set of verses, there's a bigger picture here. So, you know, this idea of committing adultery was something, an act outside of your body, mm -hmm. right? And Jesus is really trying to go, this was, um, this is what God shared, but this is, not the fullness of what that meant. He's actually going, you commit adultery by the way that you look at somebody and what you think in mm -hmm. your heart. Mm -hmm. That's a totally yeah. different, that has uh, a greater depth. And then he's really trying to introduce this, again, this idea of a Christian ethic, this human ethic of the way you treat people and how it changes the culture. It changes relationships mm -hmm. um, to one of honor and respect and those kind of things that, that now you, by you honoring the Bible and doing what is right, you're also honoring somebody else. You're bringing righteousness to earth, mm -hmm. right with God, right with others, and it changes the dynamic of a community. It's pretty powerful. I have so many things that just swirled through my head when you were saying that because that is so true and so powerful that now I don't even know if I can like isolate what I was thinking. Um, I, I was thinking how, uh, oh man, I lost it. It would have been great. It would have been so been good. Fun. So, you know, I, I think too, Keep talking. You know, for, for men, you know, we're visual for the most part. I know, I know some women are too. So we see, and we see beauty and, and, and he, he said, don't look. And, and that idea of look is not just a look. It is a intent, a leer, a yeah. stare mm -hmm. that it becomes something that now you want to do something right. with it. And I, you know, with pornography and things like that, you have access to all of these things. Um, and, and you can look at something and it physiologically, you know, lust of the flesh, it right. physiologically does something, it releases chemicals. So you get this sort of high, right. and then you go to a valley, mm -hmm. and then you'll need the high bump again. again. Uh -huh. yeah. So mm -hmm. it, it's just one of those things, it's brilliant what Jesus is doing, at least for me from a scientific standpoint, as well as a biblical standpoint, but he's getting all the way to the root. That's where I was. I was thinking even about um, later on in the New Testament, we talk about how, you know, there is no temptation that we cannot, that God does not make a way out. And uh, Nate and I will talk about this all the time of adultery didn't just start with the act. No, right. It started way. way back here. And somehow you got to the point where you made the decision that I'm going to act on this. And do, do you not pause and think through the ripple effect for this moment of what's going to happen? And you don't. 
and you don't and you because don't. the high the chemicals that are happening in your body the i'm i can i'm somehow we always think we're bigger than the natural consequences that everybody right. else faces but it's not going to happen to me kind of a deal but jesus here is talking about we can talk about the actual act of adultery but it started back here so if we you address racing lines yes crossing lines and yep. then it helps me go so really there is no temptation god that you can't help me get out of because yeah. you're pointing to me oh, well, I could just not have gone through the door here, but no, you're showing me, yeah, but I could have just not lingered here right. and I could have just not here. And with your help, that is possible. It is. And I, I think, I think, you know, sometimes we think, well, if I can block mm -hmm. these things, but really it's an inside outside job. Yeah. Right. So there are really practical things you can do to, to limit yep. exposure sure. but you're still going to be exposed yep. there's there's beautiful people men mm -hmm. and women there's mm -hmm. there's you know places that you can drive by there's places you can go by on your computer to get what you what your, your right. body craves right so you got to start with the inside and the the goal is god i want to honor you mm -hmm. god i want to honor um my fellow man or woman. Mm -hmm. God, I want to do the right thing. Would you do this work in me? So for me, I, I do think that's where those fence laws come in, right? Yeah. So there, uh, I, Chrissa has um, certain things we have on our TV or sure. I'm a grown man. Right. You know, mm -hmm. I, I, I don't need her to do that. Mm -hmm. I want her to do that. Mm -hmm. Right. And so there, there are limits and I, I have allowed myself to come under those limits so that I can keep myself. Yeah. Right. So I, I just think, but like you said, those limits, if you want to, there is a workaround. And so there is a heart condition that has to happen. We can put all the limits, all the security, all the things in place. But if my heart doesn't catch up with these fencings that I'm putting around myself, right. I'm only going to figure out how to break them, right. you know? So, so let's do this. Let's yeah. talk about maybe the practice. Yeah. Though. Right, because mm -hmm. if, if it's an inside outside, and mm -hmm. I do think it's wise mm -hmm. to to 100%. limit or put fence, yep. you know, but uh, if it's an inside outside job, how how do we do this? Mm -hmm. You're asking me. Well, you know, you're telling us. Yes. Well, here's the thing. You know, I think one of the things we're trying to do, at least through Good News, is we're trying to figure out how to do practices. Mm -hmm. um, Tell us what that means. So, oftentimes, times as a pastor, I'm frustrated because I know I've just conveyed a lot of information. I know the Holy Spirit is still gonna do his job. Mm -hmm. um, and, and maybe, you know, what was preached on this day will be remembered three years. Mm -hmm. But I think if we want to make something actionable, we have to figure out how to practically do something with it. Right. So we're, in America, we're Greek-minded. We love the idea of information. Mm, okay. We love the theory, mm -hmm. right? But in the Hebrew world, it was how do you, what do you do with that? Mm -hmm. How do you put this into practice? How does it become part of your life? And so I'm always trying to think through, and we're always trying to think through how, how do we make this a something that you can meet with the Lord and then do something with? And so um, we're, we're trying to think through more practices just to help people go, okay, this is what you're going to put into practice this week. This might be offensive, so I apologize ahead of time, but it's also why I'm not a vocal person uh, on a Sunday morning in the message, because a lot of times we can celebrate the information that you just said, preach it. Yeah, pastor. But then I just go home and I live the same way I've always been living. And I don't want to be that person. So I'm internalizing it and then taking it home and I'm listening to the podcast and I'm studying more scripture right. about what you just preached and all the things, because I really want to make sure I mean it before I say it out loud, that I am going to put a practice into place. Maybe you could just throw out a, that is really adequate. <laughs> That's not as bad as last time. Just something really you encouraging. You said that so much clearer this time. <laughs> You must really be working. The Lord's working through you. What did your notes actually say right there? That was really good. That was a God moment. Uh, no, so I realize we want response and it's encouraging, but there is sometimes a little bit of an element of like, um, I, I need to be not just cheering this knowledge that came down, but I actually need to t do the hard work of figuring out how am I now going to live this out? Yeah. Um, and... And we talk, I mean, that's where we have on here, um, developing the habits of transformation. And we've talked over and over. That sounds so non-spiritual, doesn't it? Developing the habits yeah, of transformation. Yeah, it's like, oh, process or habit or discipline or it, 
for you could say it how do i present myself before jesus to be transformed and maybe that's a better way to say it but the idea of consistently doing something to meet with the lord mm -hmm. so that you are changed i think that a the a aspect of you know putting practices into place is just our human nature we need sometimes those you know, if we're going to, if we're going to run a marathon, we go and we find a plan and we start right. doing some things or whatever. But if I'm going to become a runner, then I'm going to put myself in a place right. to become a runner. And that's different than I'm just going to train for a single marathon, yeah. in my opinion. So now what, what are the, what are the habits I might do to run the marathon? But then what are those, how am I going to put myself in the presence of runners to become one? So how am I going to, you know, there's spiritual disciplines out the wazoo. You can look them up and there, you know, one person might have four, might, one, one person might say there's 19 spiritual disciplines. I don't know. I'm not going to try to number them all. And for some, some stand out to others more than others. I like to ignore the spiritual discipline of fasting. I really mm -hmm. think that just God did not mean that he, he, I'm just kidding. Mm -hmm. I, I actually know that it probably needs to be more of a discipline in my life, but those kind of habits are, what are the habits that are going to put us in the place where we are focusing on developing a closer tie with him, not just a bunch of to-do list items that are going to end up, we're going to fail. Yep. You know, we, we, we can only keep so many disciplines for so long. Look at your new year's resolutions and then you cap out. You can't, you can't do it so all. I think the idea behind this is that it becomes part of you. Yes. Right. I, that's the, that's the goal of every habit. But you know, if you hear a message, what did you hear? Yeah. Or if you read a scripture, what did you read? Mm -hmm. And then what's going on? Mm -hmm. Are you mad? Mm -hmm. Are you happy? Mm -hmm. Was there an aha moment? You know, mm -hmm. what, what is this? And then that's when you're supposed to be personal with God. God, what does this mean? Mm -hmm. God, what do I do with this? I'm angry. You tell me not to be mad. What am, what, do you remember what they said? You yeah. remember what they did? Mm -hmm. You remember what's happened to me? Mm -hmm. What do I do with this? Mm -hmm. And then um, I, I think the other thing, you know, there is the vertical. I think the lateral, mm -hmm. you know, to somebody else, somebody that is a little further ahead or is maybe walk through something similar. You go to a fellow believer and go, how did you handle this? Mm -hmm. What do I do with this? Mm -hmm. I feel like it's opening the prison door a little bit. Yep. Um, and it's, it's kind of humbling. And then after you do these things, what is the action step? Yep. Sometimes you have to deal with it in the moment, but how can you get ahead of it? Mm -hmm. Or what is something that you can begin to practice consistently? If Raphael, if he's going to put his right. finger in front of mm -hmm. his mouth mm -hmm. to remind himself, mm -hmm. well, what is something that you can do that's an action step that you're going to consistently do until it is part of you? My one, I think I talked about this recently, but one of my friends and I actually developed something through the being challenge and it was recognizing something that we both can be guilty of. Uh, and it can be, um, maybe sometimes being critical, mm. uh, of people, of uh, you name it, we could be critical. And so we've developed a little, uh, secret code that if I hear her or she hears me, or we hear our own selves, which that's progress, right? When we catch ourselves. Yes. And I can do the signal to myself to let her know, I got it. I hear it. I hear what I'm doing. Right. <laughs> right. Right. Um, um, yeah. Just something subtle to help us both keep ourselves accountable to who we both know we want to become. And uh, there's no condemnation in it. It's it's and it just is we both know we love each other and we want to help each other grow and move forward. I could do it by myself but I don't think it's nearly as successful right. when I'm by myself. So can you give um, maybe a practical example or a tangible example of anything in, in life, whether it's with the content here or something of like how we could put some things into practice? You know, I, I think there's a lot of things you can do. You know, if it's anger, um, you know, you have, you have something that um, I'm not going to react or before I get in the car, I'm, I'm, you know, if I'm, if I'm late by 30 seconds, not a huge deal or mm -hmm. whatever. But I actually think that the biggest thing that you can do is position yourself to be loved by God. Mm -hmm. I know that sounds really weird, but it, in those moments and in those places, I want you to go, God, I know that you love me in this. Mm -hmm. You're not disappointed, not frustrated. You know, you're not shaking your head. You're, you want to meet me in this. So I am going to allow you mm -hmm. to love me in my anger. Mm -hmm. I'm going to allow you to love me in my lust. I know that you want me to trans you want me to be transformed and you're going to transform me. 
but I'm going to allow you to love me and show me mm -hmm. how to begin to change this. Mm -hmm. Because if it becomes a list of things that I need to do, mm -hmm. you cannot love well mm -hmm. if you're not loved well. Mm -hmm. And some of us, especially the people who are trying so hard to pursue the Lord, mm -hmm. it becomes a list of things to do or accomplish or get to, which is a form of lust mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. out there, that we allow God to begin. God, you know, I've always struggled with this. Would you, would you allow your love right now to mm -hmm. meet me and begin to set me free? It's so true. I, I, when I would strive to do all these things and I kept failing, 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 but there was a major breakthrough when God was able to show me how he loved me right. in all the places. And it's an identity thing, which is our hot topic that we're sure. working through right yep. now of um, how to help our church family understand their identity and who you are because of who God is right. in and through you. Then it helps me go, Okay, God, that's why that focus, God, if I let you love me, even in my imperfection, it motivates me. I want to love you back. And naturally, my tendencies change. I want to love my husband back. So I want, I'm naturally, my tendencies of yelling at him are getting better over 27 years sure. because I want to show him how much I love him because I've now been able to trust that he loves me back and he'll stay. And that is the journey I had to go on in my marriage because all I had seen was broken. And it's the journey I've had to go through with Jesus of recognizing he loves me in my imperfection. I had to balance it with greasy grace that you sure. taught on recently, yeah. right? Of because I recognize how much you love me, I no longer want to know how far or how close no, to the line sorry. I can get. I just want to love you so well. And I get frustrated when and I- And we're grieved. Yeah, we my sure. heart is saddened that I can't love you as well as I love you. Like I can't show you as well as I want to show you. And in that process, he helps me be able to love him the way I want to love him. It's still far from perfect, sure. but the pursuing heart is there. And that is how, we grow. I love that your focus on that discipline is help me understand how much you love me even while I'm still working through this. When I'm sitting in a message on a Sunday or a Wednesday or I'm listening to a sermon or I'm reading my Bible and something kind of grates on me, God, I know you are good. I know you love me. Why do I feel this when I read this? I just had this moment with a friend this week of her, it's her first time going through the New Testament and she read a couple things that rubbed her wrong. And, I, and it, uh, uh, scriptures about women mm -hmm. and their place and things like that and understanding culture and context and all those kinds of things. But she just had an epiphany moment of her own life experiences. She was projecting into how she was reading the content. And so it, in that moment, it was like, oh, I'm doing that. Right. So as I recognize that, it allows me to let God love me through even the scripture that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah. And we can wrestle out why. Yep. It makes me uncomfortable. I, I think, and I, you know, I know we're getting ready to close. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to say that sometimes my, my biggest anger and frustration was rooted in the fact that I wanted so badly to please the Lord, mm -hmm. and I kept yes. running up against my own limits or my own sin patterns, or I did it again that I didn't even want to try mm -hmm. anymore. And I think that's another thing that you can take before the Lord and allow God to love you in it because he loves you no less. Yeah. And learning how to allow God to love us well is part of that place mm -hmm. that he wants to heal or set free or minimize as we journey with him. Um, it's needed mm -hmm. and it's necessary, but it has to be learned. Yeah. Some of us can do well. We just not very, we're not loved well. Yeah. Hundred yeah. percent. It's like you just read my mail for the last forty years of my life. But um, I think rather than repeat the list that you shared with us on Sunday about developing those habits, I just hear the strong one today is just engaging God in it. Yeah. Let's not worry about all these other things. And you know, I need to get in Christian community. Yes, you do. I need to process with someone. Yes, you do. I need to you know study the Bible more and understand more of why why I do what I do or why I don't do what I do. Yes, you do. But all of that stems from this bottom line. Just go to God with yeah. it. 
just keep going to him with it and then listen for the Holy Spirit to show you either he's going to open a door where suddenly you can bring it up in conversation or he's going to take you to a verse or you're going to hear a podcast that suddenly speaks right into what you just asked him to help you understand more about him and that's that's those beginning baby steps of engaging with him for transformation yeah. rather than making a big old list that sure gets overwhelming. Well, thank you guys so much for being here today. We love this Sermon on the Mount series. I hope you're loving it as well. I think next week, do you know, what do we get into? Are we at divorce? And we got so. some, we got some touchy ones. Other. Remember, remember when scripture ruffles your feathers a little bit, engage him in it and wrestle it out right. so that you can understand the true heart of God. Because at our core, God is love. God is for us. And these principles are for us to represent his kingdom to the world around us. So thanks, PJ, for being here. Absolutely. Have a wonderful week, guys, and we'll chat again next time. Bye. Thanks again for joining us today. We would love for you to tell others about the podcast. Make sure you subscribe to it, too, because this will help others find out about it. If you missed it before, we love to hear from you. So if you have any stories to tell about how the message impacted you, or maybe you have a question or comment, make sure you email us at podcast at goodnews.church. Y'all, this is my favorite day of the week. So go give away what you just learned and we'll chat again next time.